Welcome to the World Radio Communication Conference 2023, WRC 23, here in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, where I'm joined in the studio today by Tanya Villatrapala, who is the Vice Chair of Committee 6, as well as being Director General for Spectrum Planning for the Instituto Federal de Telecomunicaciones for Mexico. Tanya, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me here. Now, let me start off by asking you about the WRC, the World Radio Communication Conference. Why is this an important event for the world, in your opinion? Well, this conference sets the, the line to follow for all the radio frequency bands and how to coordinate among the different countries, which type of services we're going to use in each of the bands. So this is very uh, helpful also to have the equipment that we use for telecommunications in one country, also operating in another country or where we, when we travel, for example. So this is why uh, this is such a huge uh, event and it also sets the, the end of a, a study cycle of four years. So we've been working four years to come here and now to try to agree on the issues. So now, as I mentioned before, you are newly elected, in fact, vice chair of COM6, the committee six. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the work of the committee that you are vice chairing. Yeah, sure. The committee six at the conference deals with issues like the resolutions, uh, some of the resolutions that we are seeing, also the we call it country footnotes. That means that, for example, in my country, we use a certain frequency band for one service. So we have to have uh, a note uh, with some text and some conditions and we review those here. And also one very important issue of Committee 6 is the future agenda uh, for the future conference in 2027. We are starting now to agree on which uh, issues we are going to study in four years. So this committee has to agree on which uh, issues we're going to be studying and what will be the, the agenda for the conference in 2027. Now, for some people, four years would seem an extremely long time to be preparing for a conference. Why is it so long, in fact? It's actually not enough in some cases because uh, we need to do some studies, we need to try to agree among the different regions, among the different countries. So, And we have uh, more than 20 topics to look at. So all the study groups in the ITUR sector are dealing with this uh, uh, with these studies, with this analysis, so it takes time, of course, and, and then to try to agree on a common position in four years from now. Excellent. Now, there's been a big push for a number of years now to increase the participation of women at the World Radio Communication Conference. How successful do you think that's been? I think it has been uh, successful. There's a network of women in uh, ITUR, actually in all the sectors in, in ITU, and uh, I have also participated in, in the other sectors in ITU, so I see many female colleagues now and in, in more, more important in, in leadership positions. So, for example, in my delegation in Mexico, we are more women in the technical uh, delegation than men. So this is this is new. We are also the head of delegation is uh, a woman. So this is uh, this is different that I'm sure from some years ago. And what impact do you think the outcomes of this conference will have for the future of radio communications? I think it's uh, very important what we decide here because we also open the door for new services to operate in some frequency bands. So we are, if we look at the digital divide, which we still have uh, some work to do there, then this, this conference will allow uh, new services, new technologies to operate in, this, uh, in the whole frequency bands, uh, some uh, new services such as the satellite services that can help, for example, to uh, give uh, telecommunication services to the rural area. So this is very, very important. I was going to ask you, closer to home, how has the telecommunications and radio communications landscape been evolving in Mexico? Well, normally in, in Mexico, it takes a, a, a little bit longer to have the new technologies. For example, now we are starting with the 5G deployments, whereas here we are already talking about 6G. So we still have uh, some work to do, especially because we have like two realities in Mexico. One is the uh, urban areas and the big cities. Mexico City is one of the biggest cities in the world and we have all the technology there, but we also have the rural Mexico. We have some villages where it's very difficult to, to give uh, these services because uh, we have some isolated towns in the middle of the mountains and it's really, really complicated and expensive to give uh, the services. So we are uh, working on it. And what will the solution be to connect to that last mile? I think it has to be a partnership between the government and the industry because sometimes uh, we need 
policy, public policy and funds to help to, to bridge the, this uh, digital gap. Tanya Vile Trapala, thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Thanks for sharing your insights uh, with regards to the work of the committee, but as well as uh, what's happening in Mexico. And we look forward to catching up with you again in the not too distant future. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, which I'm sure you will have, then please check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on SoundCloud, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And for further information, check out our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.